can launch it in the next one. Moving on to Gregor's question on high morning glucose on a low carb, high fat diet. Hi, Rob. I really appreciate what you're doing, and I'm a great fan of your podcasts. I read the transcripts. Anyway, to the point. After I cut off grains, sugars, sugar, legumes, and so on, my fasting glucose went high. On average, it is 95 milligrams per deciliter, mostly between 90 and 100. You mentioned this subject in your 385th podcast with Sean Baker, one of my favorite podcasts on your site, but I didn't feel it was fully addressed and explained. I have a graph for about 15 years of measurements here. Around 2010, I turned paleo low carb high fat. Recently, I've measured my fasting insulin level and it was 4.9. I've also measured my glucose levels for one typical day and it is very stable between 90 and 109. Here's the graph of that. The orange vertical lines are meals. I eat only twice a day. I know I'm no diabetic. I have no health issues except two to three mild autoimmune diseases. The symptoms come and go. Is my quite high fasting glucose anything to worry about? I have a, fe- a friend following quite similar diet and lifestyle. His fasting sugar is around 70 to 75. Does my 95 milligram per deciliter fasting sugar have negative impact on my health, aging speed, and so on? And if so, can I do anything about that? Thanks for taking one more time. Yeah, a couple of things on this. Like the dawn phenomena tends to be where people see this significantly. In the morning, we get a little bit of a, a cortisol release helps us get going and that will definitely elevate blood sugars and perhaps disproportionately in some people. This is where like kind of triangulating in on this is helpful. So we've got some fasting blood glucose levels, which is okay, but it's very like snapshot. Mm -hmm. So now we want to start thinking about, okay, what does this thing look like over time? It sounds like uh, Gregor tracked this over a day, but still we want to know weeks and months and, and stuff like that. And that's where A1C and fructosamine can help us kind of triangulate in on this. If fasting blood glucose seems to be consistently high, but A1C is normal, then we're kind of like, okay, not not a big deal. We're, we're not getting complete excursions, you know, that are, are, are problematic. They're not high all the time. If we have fasting elevated glucose, high A1C, then we start getting concerned, but this is still where we need to fall back on the fructosamine because the fact that you're eating low carb means that red blood cells can live longer and we can get an artificially elevated uh, red blood cell number from the, the A1C. So if we had a scenario of high fasting blood glucose, elevated A1C, but a low normal fructosamine, then what that tells us is we're getting some dawn phenomena. The A1C is a consequence of red blood cells living longer. And the A1C is to some degree a little bit the linchpin thing that we're going to look at in that scenario. Beyond that, you know, some people notice, uh, again, uh, supplementation with electrolytes, particularly sodium can help this. Mm-hmm. If we're running a little bit sodium deficient, uh, we tend to to have an elevated blood glucose response. And there's all kinds of mechanistic, re- mechanistic reasons for that. Um, some people just find that, re- interestingly, reintroducing 50, 7,500 grams of carbs uh, ends up, on average, dropping their total blood glucose o- over time. Because, again, um, it's this is something that gets lost repeatedly in the low-carb scene. It, it's funny. Um, people will freak out about the dangers of too much protein kicking you out of ketosis, but then they, if they see some elevated blood glucose levels, they're like, I'm eating no carbs, so how can, you know, uh, my blood glucose go up? But if you are adrenalized, if your sleep is poor, uh, elevated cortisol, then you can have elevated blood glucose levels just from, from dumping stuff out of the liver. So... Mm-hmm. Couple of things to do. Um, I would get the A1C and fructosamine and see what those look like. And if both of the A1C and the fructosamine look good, as we described here, then I wouldn't really worry about it. It, Clearly you're tracking the the pants off this thing. So I would just keep tracking it and make sure it doesn't go anywhere squirrely from there. Uh, Beyond that, um, if you want to try to nudge things, I would definitely make sure that you are 100% on point with your sodium intake. Uh, Marty Kendall just did a great piece on this uh, for optimizing nutrition. Maybe I'll try to remember to get that in the show notes. It literally just came out this morning. And then uh, Drink Element, our our website, talks about that uh, a ton. And then finally, reintroducing some carbs. Those are the things to kind of pressure test this and see which one is, is working best.